Oh, wow. Um, let me mute this. Let me mute this. We have a lot to talk about. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. Um, let me tell you something. Kevin Lorena, the South African, is going to be really upset with himself when he goes back and watches the replay. And that he left this fringe contender prospect, Justice Hooney, off of the hook. Look, look at this sweet dance moves he does. He let him off the hook. That was at about the 1 minute 20 second mark of the last round, the 10th round, the final round. Where Justice Hooney... This is a shot again. Where Justice Hooney was on a comeback after losing, arguably, the first half of the fight. I'm T.J. Controversy with Fight View 360. We're going to listen to the post-fight interview. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I said it before talking to my Australian boxing colleague that I just don't see Justice Hooney as being a special fighter. I just don't see it. Am I allowed to have my opinion? Mm -hmm. I've been covering this kid, this guy, who was 24, for about four years now, three, four years now. And I'm just not seeing it. For one, he's had significant hand injuries. Two, at the, in the heavyweight division, he doesn't have that pop, that power to keep fighters off of him. That's concerning. Now, this was a significant step up for him, uh, fighting Kevin Lorena. Oh, let's listen in. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. We're going to talk. Thanks for watching. I'm really interested in hearing these cards. Do not be surprised at a draw, and do not be surprised if Hooney loses, or if the cards are going to be super crazy wide against um, uh, uh, Lorena. Let's turn it up. By the way, please, like the video, subscribe. We cover every Justice Hooney fight and every Australian boxing champion. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Both judges, Michael Alexander and Kieran McCann, are in agreement. They both scored the same, 96 to 94. And Judge Howard Foster scores it, 98 to 92. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And now the WBO Global Heavyweight Champion, Justice Hooney! Yeah, no, the right man has got the, the nod on the scorecards there. It was a brilliant start from Lorena and an equally fantastic start. I, uh, but I agree with the 96-94. Uh, uh, I agree with that. Um, I just don't see it. I just don't see it, ladies and gentlemen. What's that? I'm a bad wrong screen. I just don't see it, ladies and gentlemen. It's the power. Um, by the way, this is the heaviest he came into the ring um, in his pro career. Nine fights now. Um, not by much, but he weighed in two, 243 and a quarter compared to uh, the 242 and a half, depending on how you look at it. You know, if that's, you know, but I think that uh, with his style, he needs to move a lot. And he was sluggish sometimes in there. Oh, post fight interview. Let's listen in. Of the ring in Ade. Justice, uh, firstly, thing. congratulations on the biggest win of your career. Um, we have to go and talk about that final round. I guess it's testament to your fitness and what you do with your training team that you're able to get through that round. Yeah, look, um, I've done all the hard work in the gym. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm glad my legs were strong enough to uh, stick it out. Did he surprise you at all? Again, you had problems in the second round. You seem to be struggling to adjust to his southpaw stance, but then you made the adjustments later in the round. Did he surprise you at all? Um, no, that, that's what I was expecting um, when I came out here. Uh, so yeah, it, just, it was just a matter of time uh, to when I adjusted to it. Eddie's been talking about so many big fights for you next, potentially you on the five versus five card, on the undercard of Bivol versus Viterbiev. Are you ready for that now? Of course, of course. Um, I'm always up for the challenge and, um, yeah, I'd love to be a part of the, one of those cards. Let's bring in your promoter, Eddie Hearn. Eddie, uh, uh, that final round, eh? Uh, we've seen so much in boxing, but that final round must have had you nervous, but again, it is testament to the young man's fitness. Yeah, let's, let's understand it. In his eighth fight, he boxed Andrew Tabiti, former world title challenger. Tonight, in his ninth fight, he boxed Kevin Lorena, a world champion at Cruiserweight. Tabiti's a Cruiserweight. He's progressing well beyond his years, and he wants to move quick. Mick and the team want to move him quick. I think sometimes a lot of the strengths and attributes that he has is negated against a smaller guy like Tabiti, like Lorena. 
So I'd like to see him in with a big heavyweight where he can use his speed and his movement a little bit more effectively. But that was a massive learning fight. You know, he was hurt badly in the 10th round. Luckily, he was fit enough and strong enough to come through. So must improve against the better level of opposition and particularly the big boys. But I like the way he's developing. And be sure that when the, the tests come, nights like that will make him ready. Just want to say to this man to my left, you know, to, to be able to show the heart that he showed in the ring tonight under the circumstances, the whole boxing world, you know, wishes you the very best, my friend, and, and, and you know, peace to you and your family, and, and God bless. Certainly. Eddie, just before you go, again, you did mention to me off camera about potentially putting him on at five versus five. Is it a bit too early to put him in against the likes of Dubois and Joe Joyce? Look, we, we'll speak to Mick. You know, every fight you have to look at afterwards, and tonight he came through an exceptional fighter and beat him. But you don't want to move too quickly, too early. But what I do know is tonight was a big box ticked against a world-class fighter. Yeah, congratulations on the biggest win of your career, Justice. Thank you very much. Let's bring in Kevin Arena. Uh, Kevin, uh, you hear the crowd as well reacting to you. It has been a very, very tough week for you, obviously the passing of your mother. And I, I know the boxing world are praying for you. Uh, you're very, very close in that 10th round, Kevin. Yeah, firstly, uh, thank you to everybody. His Excellency, uh, Frank Warren, George Warren, Eddie, um, for putting on this fight, Justice, good competitor. Look, there's no such thing as uh, good timing when somebody dies, you know? So emotionally it was tough, but uh, you can't take away any credit from this young man. He's a tough competitor. I had him hurt in the first or second and the 10th. So testament to my guts, but back to the drawing board, you know, I get dabbled back at Bridgerweight. I'm still the Bridgerweight uh, interim champion, I believe, obviously. When I had him hurt, I should have finished him, you know, but kudos to him. He stayed up like a tough lion, a young lion. And uh, yeah, just thanks to everybody for the wishes. It, it has been challenging, but no excuses. Uh, my performance tonight isn't based on the loss of my mom. I came out here for my mom in her honor. So thank you very much, everybody. Final one, I, I was watching your corner in that 10th round. As you had him hurt, your corner was screaming more and more and more. Do you wish there was a few more seconds in that one? Of course, you know, I was trying to land him when he was, when he was on, uh, on wobbly feet. I was trying to put it on his chin to put him away. I mean, I was going for him. It's the 10th round, you know, we're both giving it our all. And uh, that's heavyweight boxing, you know, he boxed better tonight. I probably had him hurt more, but tough, tough competitor because a lot of guys, when I chim in like that, they go. So well done to Justice Hune and his team. They're a phenomenal team. And I'd like to dedicate this one to my mom, my beautiful kids at home and my wife, and to everybody in Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Congratulations, Kevin. Congratulations, Justice as well. Fantastic fight. Back to you guys. What a way to start the night. Yeah. Well, we got some time to talk. Uh, you know, uh, condolences to him and his mom. I mean, uh, for his mom, that's uh, some sad news, especially when you have a fight week. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, he won the fight, but he, I mean, he lost the fight, but he won the war, if that makes sense. You know, because Justice Hooney. Uh, well, I guess you could say exposed. And that wasn't a good excuse by Eddie Hearn when he said, uh, what did he say? Uh, well, you know, he, you know, it, it, let's see how he looks against bigger guys. You know, he struggled with two cruiserweights, two, two smaller fighters, you know, with, uh, Andrew Tabidi and, and Kevin Lorena, you know, and he didn't really struggle with, uh, Tabidi, but basically he couldn't get him out of there, a smaller fighter. So he wants to put him against bigger fighters where he's hoping that uh, Hooney can be the faster fighter. But let's face it, right now, uh, Daniel Dubois will beat him. I think they need to slow roll it. He's only 24. I think they need to step back and be like, okay, you know what? Let's, 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 you know, let's rebuild a little bit. So, for example, he is ranked, and Joe Joyce, nah. Nah, because they have that uh, Bart Bart Biev uh, Bevo card, and you're gonna have Matchroom Boxing, Eddie Hearns and Frank Warren's Queensberry Promotions, putting on five of their fighters, you know, against each other. So they wanted to put Hooney against either Joe Joyce or Daniel Dubois. Both of them would ice him. He wouldn't be to deal with the juggernaut, you know. Despite how he looked, uh, 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 Joe Joyce um, against Joseph Parker. And uh, uh, I forgot, he fought Big Bang. Yeah, Big Bang, Jay Lee Zhang. You know, he, Joe Joyce will walk him down. Dubois, he may have a better chance with, but Dubois has got the power. And by the way, Lorena Ford Dubois, by the way, he's got the power to, 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 to beat him down. 
So he's ranked number 14 by the WBA. He should stay there. Start working his way up. Fight a Jonathan Goudry or something. You know, somewhere like that. You know, uh, he's ranked number 15 by the IBF. And number 12 by the WBO. No need to fast track this dude. You know, like they, they got, you know, he's going to need some work. Uh, take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. I am T-Street Controversy with 5 360